Hello, hello. I hope you all are fine. And now let's start with a new Spring Boot security video. And as we saw in the last videos, how hard it is and tedious it is to implement security with Spring Boot and Angular and so on, and how much stuff you have to do. And we haven't even done a lot. So there are so much more possibilities to include. I want to show you an open source alternative which is uh, used in enterprise a lot and that is Keycloak which is an authentication provider and as always code I will upload to my github repository for you to clone and to play around with and now let's get started and look into the code so we will start, let's close all of this, and we will start in the back end. And now we have a lot of classes less than last time. We just have a security config, a error handler you can ignore for now. And in here we just have our security filter chain bean and nothing more. And as you can see, course is default as always CSRF is disabled as always every request here now is uh, authenticated and you can use the roles and so on as you want uh, exception hand exception handler for that um, session stateless as always and this now is the new stuff in here it's a OAuth 2 resource server where I configure a JVT authentication converter. So I get a JSON web token and I convert it to an authentication object in Spring Boot. And in here I have specified a new authentication converter which will be my <coughs> which will use my key cloak re, uh, role converter which just means I uh, take the key cloak roles and make them to Spring Boot roles or maps them to Spring Boot roles. So let's go in here it's the second class we need to know and in here I get the JSON web token and I get the resource access, just rename this, this resource access and from that I get the backend, I just named it, you will see it uh, in the key cloak and the backend has roles and there I get the roles if the list is not empty and I map the roles to role simple granted authority and it's done and I will show you in the debug in a moment and that's all for the backend except I need to show you the dependencies and the dependencies uh, any the all uh, one thing that's new and that you need is a Spring Boot starter OAuth 2 resource server oh, yeah, yeah, and I forgot the application YAML in here you have to spy the resource server and the issuer URI and you can also uh, add a key uh, store here, but I didn't. And for this easy example, a uh, short example, that's all for the back end. Now let's go to the front end, then in the end, we will look at key cloak and going through the example. So in the front end, I added some dependencies too. And this is Keycloak Angular and Keycloak JS. That's the only thing that's special in here. In the dependencies, everything same as always. And in my app, I have just two classes: auth service, which injects a Keycloak service, and has a logger method, a logout method. But everything in here runs using the Keycloak uh, provided service and some helper methods and so on and so on and the so auth guard which just has a is excellent as key cloak auth guard has an is access allowed and in here we using the key cloak service and the router and the rest is totally the same than on the normal angular uh, auth guard 
and we're using them in here in the roots like last time is authenticated injecting the auth card calling the method and then setting the method in here and can activate so anything else new yes we need to provide that in the module or if standalone in your main ts you have to add this provider for uh, your key clock, app initializer, key clock, initialize key clock, multi two, and the app's key clock service, and above here we have the key clock initialize uh, method or function. And in here you specify the URL of your key clock server. You need now to pay some more attention. You have to set the realm and you have to set the client ID. And if we go to the backend again in the application YAML, you will see we have the same URL here, but in here there is a realm and the realm is named in here, right? So that for that. And now let's look at Keycloak, which I have on 9999. And here you can configure everything you ever dreamed of, but now I will show you the minimum to set up. Create a new realm. I have done this with test realm, then create new clients. Right? I have done this already with a backend client and a frontend client, and we will look at the frontend client. And in here, you need to specify the URLs, and it's important uh, where the slashes and the stars and so on are. Root URL, home URL, basic, no slash, validation, redirect URL, slash star. Logout, redirect, slash star, web origin, nothing. So that should work. Same for the backend. Then you can create a user in here, add user, username, let's say test, user, create, you can set credentials, and you can specify actions, you can do so many stuff in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Temporary, no. So if we would say temporary, we would have to enter a new password. At first, oh, we just can do that right now. Save password. So, and now we can go in here. If you see, we try to fetch data from the secure uh, endpoint. It's not working. So let's log in. Test underscore user one two three four sign in. Okay, we need to enter a new password, 12345, submit, bang, we are in, welcome to secured page, test user, and you see, we get this, is a secured endpoint. So that's working fine. Last point I want to show you is the roles. So in here, right now, if you refresh this, there is no role. So as you see, backend roles, zero as expected, because user has no role, we haven't set a role here yet. So we go to the user, go to role mapping, assign a role, we filter by client, we go to the and we just take those admin role for our backend in here, assign it. Now let's see if it's already working, if we relog, no, it's already working, we have roles in here, role admin, and here admin and if you go let's go a step further and here the authorities are mapped in the um, authentication converter and if you see here role admin is already mapped in here so that's all short video not even 10 minutes full authentication with key cloak and you also have sessions in here you see the test user right now is logged in with client front end you can sign them out, you can do everything in here. The login screen, you might say, looks a bit strange, right? You can provide a own login screen. And I have also added an example in here. So in my, in this repository. So you can go in here, real settings, you can go to themes. And you can now change a custom theme, probably not much in there, but if I now log out and log in again, you see there is 
a new theme with another title and another background and the image is just not loading because I probably have uh, have not set it up right now. So it's not found but you, if the image were there it would be here in the background. With that I invite you to download Keyclock, play a little bit around with it if you have issues installing it and so on I have uh, can delete this. I have a Docker Compose file in here, where is Keycloak with a Postgres database, which will store the Keycloak tables, and in here is a theme I talked about, where I have defined the properties and the messages and so on. But I feel like there's one file missing in here and let's see, see properties yeah, here's, uh, okay. I will look it up and if I find it I will add the, the missing file so with that I will end the video and wish you all a nice day and have fun coding and stay hungry and go on